Good morning everybody. Today I thought I would start off with finishing off my pincushion. I finally got some more of the walnut shell. Um, the store finally got their stock in which was really good. I'm glad I ordered it when I did because it's apparently they were saying it's really hard to come by now. Um, and instead of them, oh, instead of them pick, uh, sending it out by mail, I picked it up myself. I picked it up myself and so was able to um, get two bags to replace the cost of shipping I'd already paid for. I already have, I already have some in here. Okay, so that's what I've got left. That one can probably go in next. I won't need it all. I'm just finding a spot for that until I put it away. But as you can see, this isn't quite enough. So I needed some more. So let's see if we can finish this off. And I'll probably speed it up because I might make a mess. I have no idea. And this is, um, I think it's Anne Wood. She had a very simple tutorial. Um, Sarah of Roxy Creations by Sarah has one on her desk. And me, along with it, countless other ladies, sort of fell in love with the whole thing. I'm a pincushion person. I love them in all sorts of styles and shapes and sizes. Uh, so wanted to make one, and it's very simple. I used an old pillowcase, a quilted pillowcase uh, which is sort of this color here and then I've just patched pieces of floral fabric and linen on it. I did leave blank spots um, and even that I didn't stitch over it because just so my um, pins don't get lost in it so I just sort of stitched around the edge. What is that? like an over stitch is a word for that um, did the running stitch on the back there and around the sides and I've done a little flower garden at the front there I've used a little bit of crafty me shop trim on the front a little bit of blanket stitch here uh, and I think that's it but I do think it's pretty so oh and some um, really old lace up there as well. So let's let's get it filled up, shall we? I don't think I'll need a, a funnel for it. I hope not. So that's all I'm doing. Just pouring it all into there. And with walnut shells you do need it fairly firm. And they do keep So that's, that's full up to there. So as you can see, I didn't have enough. You do need it quite firm 
with walnut shells and they will settle over time as well so you do need it quite firm what I might do is I don't know if, oh yeah I see um, and I got this from a, sh a local store called the Patchwork Angel it's a lovely little patchwork shop I remember when it first opened um, I used to do a little bit of patchwork but I didn't take it up as a major hobby because uh, quilting supplies are very expensive <laughs> I much prefer the slow stitch way where you can you know just use odds and ends which you can with quilting as well but when I was doing it it was quite a long time ago now I just found it far too expensive um, I'm wondering if I can pour it from here or whether I should tip it into there and pour it because I need something to hold it don't I hang on I don't think it'll fit in there will it fit in there let's have a look okay that's that's rather perfect that is my glue bottle holder that I made years and years and years ago and I just pop my glue bottle in there and it looks really pretty but the, the cardboard section comes out and it just sits in this lovely little metal holder so I'm just going to move it there so I can see it I don't know if you can but let's see how we go here Now, if I recall rightly, the tutorial said if you can't fill it right to the edge and you're worried about everything spilling out to fill that last little bit with some wadding. But I can fit a bit more in there, I think. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Let's just seal that back up and I've got a good supply of walnut shells now don't I so I might just get myself a little bit of wadding to stick in the end and then I'll be back not wadding sorry you know the fiber fill stuff so I've got a bit there I'm not sure how much I'll need might just need that much there oh, although it might be the right size yes I think so and what I need to do is just I need a pin pin for my pin cushion <laughs> Hold it and hold that. There we go. Oh, okay. So I tucked mine in, so I'm going to have to tuck it in. Let's go back and let me just. Okay, so I need to tuck mine in. Um, that's okay. It's probably just as easy, I think, to do this by hand because it might be, and that's what we're meant to do, I think, that if I recall, just tuck it in like that. What I might do is, where are, uh, 
and like that and if I start from the center and work my way across I think that will be fine yeah that looks like it's in the center there just a nice strong thread okay move that and what do we have over here to our normal I think what's that it's a scan fill just skip over this part if you want to I know this is the I know this is the journal of stitchery but I really wanted to oh I've got that one <laughs> it's one of these non-threading ones I like those I think I will double stitch uh, double my thread on this overcast that was the name of the stitch I was thinking of for those flowers on the English. Okay. Right to move all my paperwork off the desk from the journal I'm working on, which I've really enjoyed working on. Now to sew this, I'm putting my thread inside and bringing it outside like that, so that the knot will end up on the inside oh I need to <laughs> sorry I know you want to see but I need to see as well so and, and it's just like an overcast sort of stitch that I'm going to do there like that and pull it and it will close it up really nicely and it doesn't matter if I see the stitches because it's slow stitching and doesn't have to be pristine and I have to do it so it's strong enough to keep it closed and we don't have any accidents with walnut shells but I don't want it going to a point really that it might anyway I'll say I'll, I'll speed this up for you All right, so that's basically what I'm going to be doing all the way along. Okay, so I'm going to continue. I'll go down to the end, finish it off, and then come back and go that way. Okay, I am done. That's the wrong end I'm showing you. That's the right end there. Just and I didn't stuff it quite as full as my little... Um, these ones these are like rock hard there's no no and I found them actually a little bit hard to get the pins in at first so um this one's it's really nice like it mind you this is a looser weave as well um it's firm but it's you know what is that word malleable they remind me of draft stoppers and I thought you know if you were looking for a project a slow stitch project you could make your own draft stoppers in the same way so my new big cushion is finished let's put some pins in it shall we okay. so I thought if I can try and keep similar type of pins in the similar sections whether that works or not I don't know oh this is going to be good because I've got like one two three pin cushions on my desk um, it'd be nice to have one big one but it's not going to be for my needles it's just going to be for my pins I have my oh, looks like a hedgehog actually at the moment I have my needle one here because um, needles sometimes you can lose them you know so if I just keep that one especially because that's really hard and keep them threaded over there okay so 
there we go, we have those there. I hope I'm not boring you too much. Where will we put our blue ones? We can put our blue ones here. Not that it really matters, but might as well have a little play. I love pin cushions. Um, I I could make them all the time. I just love pin cushions. I've got so many in various places because when I finish using them for a while, then I'll just use them as an ornament somewhere. Um, these little ones. See, this one's quite. This is my Cricut one. This is quite a loose weave, and I'm scared that they're going to disappear inside of the pin cushion. So we'll put these ones here. And these are the Merchant and Mills. They're like, um, what are they called? Uh, entomology pins. Okay, and some white ones. Oh, look at that. And the walnut does help to keep your pins sharp. I know it certainly helps. Oh, oh, see, look. Oh, see, what's that? That is, oh, that got me. That is a needle in there. And it's gone straight through the pin cushion. Okay, so that's why I'm keeping my needles over there so I can, oh, that hurt. I don't think there's any more in there. That's why you, yeah, oh, okay, you don't want them too loose a weave. So although the linen is a loose weave, it has got the um, pillowcase behind it, which is quite a tight weave. And then there's wadding behind that pillowcase, and then there's the walnut shell inside. So where are we going to put that? There, okay. Oh. Learn from that mistake. Okay, so isn't that nice? I like new pink cushions, I really do. Oh, okay, so see, that's how I made it. It's just a roll of paper on a slight angle because this is on an angle in the bottom. I've got a scrap, see that, that's been turned over because it got all gluey on one side. I put that in there like that and that goes in the bottom and then I can either put it that way while it's full but as it gets emptier then I just put it that way and it I can replace that bit of cardboard which I have done over the years and that's what I keep my glue in and it looks pretty while I'm not using it there and it takes the larger bottles as well oh look at that so we better keep that where we can see it. And I, I did the little garden on the front on purpose so that that's what I would see and it looks pretty. Okay, so they're my scraps for my journal. I'm getting on with my journal. I'm doing that, so I'm almost ready to film another part of that. So I need to... I've got no room. I'll be back. 